So, I'm going to give you uh, a walkthrough of all the labs available in, in the enterprise version of the security labs and then, then you can for yourself go and check out the, uh, the community edition which has a limited set of these uh, labs. But in general we have so many so many labs here you can do starting from uh, data privacy going to the basics of, of terminal use command line is, is all, always useful to know the basics and also some bit more uh, advanced commands and, and tasks. Then we have everything from, I'm not a develop, developer myself, so um, this is also partially much new information for myself as well, but uh, there is all the uh, chapters from the OWASP are there, injection, you have stack overflow, spoken authentication, data exposure, you have exexes, you have broken access control, then we can have security misconfiguration, which is uh, more of a system, system level issues you might encounter and, and these labs they are some of them are are walkthroughs so you are guided to the entire lab and uh, some of them require you to use Google or other other sources and, and of course your own expertise in, in development to uh, to complete them so they're not always that that easy to complete so you might want to try them out one by one on the community side at least, at least to, uh, to see what you can do. We have excesses, we have common react pitfalls, we have insecure deserialization, and also many, many vulnerabilities you can ex exploit and, and protect from. But let's go and check the first lab I'm planning to show you. Let's go to a very basic lab, which is about see-through traffic. So when you start a lab, you get the terminal screen and you get tabs based on the, uh, the, the lab itself. You, have, you may have a code editor, you may have a log step. And on the enterprise side, you can also have this uh, integrated browser feature, which is not, I think, present, not, not present at the community edition. But as you can see here, we now have a real app running, and I can also uh, open it on a new tab. I hope you can see the tab here. No, you cannot see the, the one tab. But you can open it on, on a separate browser tab, which is the same view you have here. Okay, so now let's, 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 let's make the, uh, the lab complete. I have now started the app, and now I am going to go and register a user on the web app. I'm going to be using an email of guest at example.com and give it a very, very poor password. You might even guess it. And now I'm going to press register, as it says on the instructions. Very, very simple stuff. So, now I am logged in, and uh, the f next thing I'm going to do is follow the instructions again. I'm going to go to the terminal and check. This is about not using encrypted requests internally or, or visibly. So the situation here is that somebody has access to the logs, has access to the server logs where multiple sites might be hosted 
or the same site for for all the users so we are supposed to go to a directory called home white hat forever and th here we have a log file which is called forever log lots of stuff still. so i'm going to just make a shortcut and it has it's it's been said here that the traffic is not encrypted so i should be able to see a line that includes this string here and now i'm going to use grep to catch that line cat forever log and grep uh, log password so there we have it I think that is the string we are looking for so I might now try that it says there is a user hunter 2 who is using the same application and because those requests that are sent are not encrypted using HTTPS I could try to log in with Hunter 2's credentials. Using the password, I can see in plain text in the log file. So that's it. So we can clearly see that it must be ensured that encryption is uh, should be everywhere, internally and externally. So. We have now completed the first lap. Let's do a second lap. That was one. This is about basic command line system. We, I can only run one lap at a time, so it's now been, been cleaned up. Just going to follow the instructions again. There is a file, greeting txt, here which contains string hello world and I'm now going to try to encode the text uh, using base64 I'm going to issue a command base64 greeting txt so I can check that I have received the current output there is another way to do that we can do an echo hello world command and then pipe it to the base64 command very simple commands the actual assignment here is uh, trying to use echo and base64 with the D option to decode this text so I'm going to copy that I'm going to say echo oh not that one <laughs> misspelling a lot of a lot of stuff so here and then I'm going to give the decode command base 64D. So now we have the current string. And I get the green light to go ahead. Okay, now we're going to install. This is a real system I'm, I'm using here. It's a real virtual machine, so I can give commands to it and do lots of stuff. So I'm going to install the latest OpenSSL. Into it. Okay, so now we have OpenSSL installed. And then we are supposed to be using AES256 CPC to create an encrypted file so I'm just going to take this command here and paste it here let's see what happens when I do it I can just give it a, a password but it, now it gives me an error this is the one 
one part of la one aspect of labs you need to figure some things out yourself in this case i have to add either a parameter to this uh, command either either and and put a, a number here how how many iterations should i have or then i can instruct it to use the bpk df2 and password again and now it's completed so now we should have a secret txt here oh it's an ugly file so we can also use it it's, it's binary file so we can use this code editor tab to look at the uh, contents of these files so complete it and now we are going to decrypt the same file we are going to give it a command to decrypt the secret file hopefully I remember my password for the file ah I'm supposed to be using the correct BBK DFT same stuff for decryption and encryption so it works better and now we should have here the decrypted yes it works and I can proceed okay just a few more steps this one is about creating maybe I maybe I won't complete this this step because we have one more lap to go and, and the time is running out this but you might see that this is very simple to follow. Some of these labs are, are totally, completely guided, so you don't have to have, in the best case, no, no previous knowledge of the command line or the uh, technology in question. So let's own a database as our final lab. Let's do... Uh, It's cleaning up my previous lab. So, you can actually go and use your own browser to go to this this address if you want to. So you can you can see what's happening. But now it says that I have to complete the step. I'm going to click search employees, and I'm getting the names of Alice and Bob. Now it's suggesting that I do an apostrophe search. So this is basic SQL injection lab. I'm going to give it the search field in the... Uh, I'm going to put the uh, apostrophe character in the, in the uh, search field and search for the employees. I am getting no results. But when I replace that string and add two dashes, then I am getting results, which is interesting, because this might suggest that, that my application is vulnerable to an SQL injection. So, let's move on. Let's try a more interesting search. Let's put this string into the, uh, the search field. Ah, I'm getting more results now. I'm getting employees' names, and hmm, what seems to be going on? Let's move on to the final phase. We want to know how much Alice and Bob are making money. So let's do this. Let's go back to the search field. 
give it the final step and bingo we have their salaries right in our application so now I have completed my database only lab and to remind you these are very simple examples of what you can do with, with this uh, system so you will have a lot more advanced examples here and please go and uh, sign up for the community site go to this address and sign up for the security labs community edition and you will find the same labs you find on the enterprise site with, with limited content of course that's it we have now completed three three labs <laughs>